Hello and welcome to Popcorn Mumbles, the podcast where we dig into the back catalog to select a film or television show to rewatch. I'm your host, Cody Nestor. Alongside me is my co-host, Todd Hill. What's going on, guys? If you enjoy the show, please consider us following us on your podcast platform of choice and subscribing to our YouTube channel. This week, we have chosen the 2022 film, Violent Night. An elite team of mercenaries breaks into a family compound on Christmas Eve, taking everyone hostage inside. However, they aren't prepared for a surprise combatant. Santa Claus is on the grounds, and he's about to show why this Nick is no saint. (laughs) Violent Night was released on December 2nd, 2022. On a budget of $20 million, it made $70 million. It has a Rotten Tomatoes score of 73% and an audience score of 88%. So, Todd, let's discuss a violent night. Spoilers are ahead. Todd, as always, I'll turn it over to you. Where do you want to start here? Uh, I was watching this movie, and uh, this is uh, a sum of a lot of other movies' parts. <laughs> it's a little Home Alone. It's a little Die Hard and Die Hard 2. Two, yes. Uh, you can even maybe draw a little bit of a First Blood reference in there, maybe. Yes, Yep, I can see that as well. It's a lot of things, like you said, yeah. It's um it's surprisingly it surprised me in how not it's not the best thing ever, but it just surprised me in how much I enjoyed it. Me too. I didn't have a lot of expectations for it. I didn't either. I figured it would probably be mediocre at best, and I can say it's definitely better than mediocre. It's it's that in that decent to good range, I right. think, not to get ahead of ourselves here, but I mean um, I mean, obviously, to start off, you've got David Harbour as Santa. So, Todd, what, what did you think about David Harbour, his performance as Santa? Here? I thought he did a pretty good job here. You know, I, I don't have anything against David Harbour uh, outside of maybe that one Hellboy movie that's kind of <laughs> meh. I never finished it. I, couldn't, I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't get all the way through it. You know, I've enjoyed most of David Harbour's efforts, and I thought he did a pretty good job as Jolly Old Santa. I mean, not so jolly. Not so jolly. Not sa- as Santa Claus. M- more here. disillusioned and grumpy. Yeah, kind of burned out on his job here. Yeah, Christmas has got too commercial. Kids are too uh, greedy. I think there's something he says later on that they just crave and consume. And Santa's definitely a little disillusioned here and uh, likes uh, likes a little drinky, a little drinky poo. <laughs> yeah, likes every- to knock a few back. Yeah, likes a little drinky poo. I'm going to do a wrap around. Wrap around. <laughs> rap, rap around. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, w- what's our plot here, Todd? So basically, uh, we've got uh, the Lightstone family. Uh, we have uh, a son, Jason, uh, kind of his estranged wife, Linda, and their daughter, Trudy. Mm. And they're kind of heading off to his mother's house, which, like I say, is a big compound. This is a big, well-to-do family. Uh, uh, Jason also has a sister. I think her name was Alva. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was her boyfriend or fiance. He's Morgan Steele. Yeah, he's an action film star. <laughs> uh, they have a son, Bert, who's like a you know. Uh, Social media podcaster type guy. We love him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, you have uh, Gertrude, which is played by Beverly D'Angelo. She's like the f- head of the family. Yeah. D- I didn't really look at the cast for this film. The only person I knew it was it was David Harbour. I was like, hey, it's it's Beverly D'Angelo. Haven't seen her in a long time. Had some work done. Definitely yeah. had a little had a little work done. She, I mean, everybody gets older, but... Uh, definitely, definitely had a little, little bit of. So uh, basically, they're at their, uh, they're at their compound having their family Christmas get together, and uh, they get set upon by a bunch of uh, robbers, out for out to take the family fortune. Yeah, uh, basically, our, our our main antagonist is uh, Scrooge, uh, played by John Lin- uh, John Leguizamo. Yeah. All of our little gang henchmen, they all have kind of holiday theme names right. ones like frosty and i forget all, all the names right off but basically um john leguizamo has learned that 300 million dollars has been transferred into the custody of the the lightstone family it was supposed to be money that was used i guess overseas in the war on terror but it'd be kind of misappropriated and deemed lost by some right. tricky financing done by beverly d'angelo and uh she was now in possession of 300 million that he is uh Set to steal. It's in a vault on the grounds that they got to break into. Yes. Die hard. Die anyone? hard. Exactly. <laughs> Die hard. Um, there's a there's a subplot here. Jason Lightstone. He has he's tired of kind of living under his mother's thumb. It, it's caused him to be estranged from his wife uh, and estranged a little bit from his daughter Trudy. They're not uh, him and his wife are not together anymore. Uh, you've got that kind of 
a little bit of cliche Christmas time story, which is uh, the the kids' Christmas wishes. I just wish my family could be a family right, again, right. you know, type of type of thing. So he, there's a little subplot of Jason has done something, and you don't really know at the at the beginning exactly what. But he is he's kind of telling his wife, you know, what if we didn't have to live under my mom's thumb anymore? What if we could just go somewhere and be a family again and, and get out from under the the rest of the, the crazy light stone family that I have to deal with, basically. Right. I don't want to run the company. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want my mom lording over me all the time. Like, what if we could get, what if it could be different, basically, is a, yeah. kind of a little bit of his motivation. We see he kind of brings in a Christmas gift that he kind of leaves away from like kind of everything else, puts it toward the back of the tree. You don't so want maybe, to draw any kind of attention to it. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and then of course we have David Harbor, our Santa Claus. He starts off uh, first time we see him in the film. It's he, the real David Harbor Santa is talking to a fake Santa in a bar, uh, immediately leaves, gets in his sleigh, takes to the skies and, Immediately pukes on the bartender. Yeah, some lady's looking up at like the magic looking sleigh flying away, and she's like, ah, and it gets like a mouthful of puke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but basically, it's a case of wrong place, wrong time. A little John McClain. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, <clears throat> wrong place, wrong time. Santa Claus is delivering presents to, uh, I guess, to Trudy at the uh, the Lightstone Mansion, and at the same time that uh, Scrooge and his little minions decide to uh, to break in to try to rob the place, and then. From there, it becomes Die Hard, and then it moves yep. into a little bit of Home Alone, and then a little Die Hard 2, yep. and then a little back to Die Hard 1, and then it's over. That's it. <laughs> I mean, that's really what it is. But in, in, in and, the middle, but it kind of works. It does kind of work. And in the middle <clears throat> of that is some kind of uh, fun holiday-themed action and kills. Right. Um, I have a note about it later. There's a little... At points, um, there's some there's some good action scenes. I think the action is is uh, is decent to good here. There's there's some good scenes, and then there's some some there's a the scene in the barn later where you kind of see Santa kind of uh, muster up his his strength and find his weapon and that kind of thing. And uh, there's a lot of uh, a little bit too much of that. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna shoot you. I'm gonna run at you with my gun type action. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. That like, and a little bit of that. The next guy waiting around to be punched while the other guy is currently being punched type action. Yeah, there's a little bit of that that I wish was cleaned up a little bit better. But there's some solid stuff. There's a fight scene between um, Santa and one of the the holiday villains here in the game room that I thought was done really is that the well. Star in the eye. Yes, that, that was yeah. the star in the eye, yes. There's another one that is dispatched kind of almost accidentally that falls and is impaled on an ice spike outside. Yeah. I mean, there's some there's some decent kind of stuff here, some decent some decent kills really. Um how did you feel about the rest of the cast? I mean, we've got Harbor, you got Beverly D'Angelo, like anybody that kind of stands out to you. What did you think about the little girl? I can say I thought the little girl that played Trudy, I thought she did a good job just being that, you know, just innocent, wide eyed, kind of, you know, still believing in St. Nick kind of kid. Right. Everybody kind of plays their part well. The sisters kind of money grubby trying to suck up to the mom yeah her boyfriend is just there to suck up to the mom so that she finances his next film that's like his his present to her is like you know, the layout for the movie or something yeah it's like a pitch pack <laughs> yeah the like pitch here, packet, here's yeah. the here's the pitch of my new film your my gift to you is allowing you to give me money for my film <laughs> you right basically uh bert just from the time we meet bert he's just completely obnoxious little shit yeah just completely consumed with uh social media clout and right. and those kind of things everybody pretty much plays their their part to a t i noticed the guy that's um he's kind of the the one of the henchmen that kind of stays with the family the most kind of the long-haired bearded guy i think they called him krampus I think you. I think you yeah. might. I think you're right. He might have been called Krampus. <clears throat> I I remember that guy from. Uh, do you remember him from the Freddy versus Jason? He was the the kid that got killed in the bathtub, right? I, I think, think like so. one of Freddy's only kills yeah, in I think that he movie. W- yeah, I think he was. Wasn't he supposed to be the brother of the yeah. guy Freddy puppeted or something right, in yeah. Friday the Third? Not Friday the Third. In Nightmare uh, on Elm Street Three. 
I think, I think it was because so, yeah. that was the one that was set at like the asylum kind of right or the the nut house right. whatever. I think his brother was supposed to be the one he puppeted or something like that. And I just remember that I was like, hey, that's that guy from yeah, that's where exactly where I remember yeah, you from. from yeah, from uh, Freddy versus Jason. Yeah. I remember you guy. Um, what uh, is there a favorite kill that stands out for you here, Todd? Uh, it's one we already touched on, but I really like that little game room tussle with the Christmas star to the eye. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he puts a Christmas star. Santa puts a Christmas star in the guy's eye. I think he either. I think he does. He plug it up after. I think he plugs it up, and it kind of winds up electrocuting him and too. Like yeah. sparking his face and yeah. sparking his eye, and like just lighting his head on fire. Basically, I think. Um, I don't even know if it's a kill. That's not that's not my favorite. My favorite moment in the whole film. So like when it becomes Home Alone. So um, a little bit of the backstory. So Trudy, the little girl, her uh, she's kind of a little bit bummed out at the beginning of the film because her dad Jason didn't take her to see Santa before right. Christmas. So Santa has no idea what she wants for Christmas. So to kind of uh, circumvent this and make up for it. He goes in to like the closet at the, you know, the Lightstone Manor, you know, his childhood home and finds an old walkie talkie he used to use. He gives it to her and tells her it's a magical walkie talkie that is going to allow you to kind of talk with Santa. Now Santa may not talk back cause he's real busy tonight delivering toys around the world, but he'll hear you when you talk. Yeah. So the, the premise of that work becomes a little bit home alone too. And a little bit diehard is that, she is using that walkie-talkie because Santa takes out some bad guys. He gets a hold of a walkie-talkie a la John McClane and ends up being able to communicate with her through her actual walkie-talkie. So she's kind of walking Santa through stuff, telling him what's up. He's telling her where to hide. And at one point he tells her to hide in the attic, I believe. Yeah. And that's what gives my favorite moment in the film is the two, I think one of them's name is Bjorn and the girl, the female um, right, right. The female like team member, the bad the female bad guy, they try to go after her in the attic, and she they notice like on the floor that she's left a booby trap of like I don't know it's like a it's like a nail stick. It's up. like it's like a like a roof and shingle or yeah. like a pad with like a bunch of nails tacked mm. in it, and they're kind of like how stupid do you think we are, kid? Like mm. this is like you just left this here. Obviously yeah. we can see it. They don't know the guy Bjorn starts climbing the ladder. They don't know that she's also booby trapped the ladder and like sawed one of the. Uh, the, the pegs of the ladder, the, yeah. the steps of the ladder in, almost in half. And that dude hits that step and falls down and, like, jets a nail right up through, right up through his, <laughs> his uh, chin. That was my favorite moment yeah. is, like, when it turns into violent Home Alone <laughs> and then he falls on his ass into those sp- – into those uh, into that bed of nails. Yep. Uh, the girl upstairs, I think she ends up, like – sticking her in some kind of, like, glue trap thing. She's part of her scalp ripped off. Hits her yeah. in the face. I think one of them gets hit in the face with a bowling ball. Yeah. Like, it's just it's just all really good stuff. It's like if Home Alone were, like, violent, that's what this was. And it's, it was just, I don't know, it was just really good gags. I thought that was, like, the, my favorite part of the It was. It was really good. The, the, it was well done. Yeah, I mean, it was. Like, all of, it, all of it's executed kind of really, really well. And like I said, that was my favorite part of the whole film was just is uh, is her doing the booby trap and the violent Home Alones. And it's just... <laughs> if Home um, Alone was R-rated. <laughs> exactly. If Home Alone was R-rated, I just imagine Joe Pesci and uh, I forget the other guy's name. Uh, can, oh, gosh. I can never remember his name. I, I can't just even. Remember that. I just imagine them as the wet bandits, you know, having the same fate come of them, you know. Like, it's just... Uh, it just it all works well. Like I said, it's surprisingly all this stuff works fairly well. Um, so tell us, uh, about the, 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 the double cross here, Todd. So, uh, Beverly D'Angelo and that she kind of sets up that, uh, by Leguizamo locking down the place, killing security. It's alerted like a, uh, a strike team a or kill a, squad, a kill, kill squad, squad she yeah. has, and they're in route there and they're going to wipe them out. Yeah. They're going to kill John Leguizamo and kill his, his team. But lo and behold, the semi twist of the, the film is that, the kill team commander and the kill team are also in on the plot. Right. They're going to share in the wealth of the $300 million that they expect to, to earn from stealing from the Lightstone family. And, uh, they, uh, the first person they kill is, uh, 
what was it? Uh, what was his name? Max Steele? <laughs> Not Max Steele. Oh, uh, uh, Morgan Steele. Morgan Steele. <laughs> Max Steele is the uh, the the action figure. <laughs> um, they he breaks out. He jumps out of a window. Yeah. He runs away, and they just immediately mow him down. And then from there, it's pretty much you know your third act. There's a really good scene with uh, Santa in the the barn that we kind of mentioned. That's where it's a little bit, you know hang back while I punch this other guy. Now you charge me with your gun and don't shoot at me. Santa slings a mean sledge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we get we get set up before we learn a little bit more about Santa's backstory that he was Nickaman the Red. Yeah. And he wielded a uh, a, a big hammer called Skull Crusher. Mm-hmm. So his weapon of choice that he finds in the barn is a uh, is a big sledgehammer. He also uses a, uh, a candy cane that he sharpens into a kind of a candy cane shank. Yeah. Which is also very effective. <laughs> Um, but really, the, the third act is just Santa continuing to pick those, uh, you know, pick the those people off the kill squad, and then it kind of ends up with the family being um, the family at one point kind of band together. It's like the mom, I think the um, the, sister the sister and the estranged wife, right? They kind of they kind of band together and over uh, overpower uh, Freddy versus Jason guy <laughs> and uh, kill him and take his his weapon. And then it's just kind of the family versus the rest of the hit squad kind of at the end. Uh, but John Linguizamo and uh, the uh, kill squad commander end up taking off on uh, some snowmobiles. Yeah. Heading to try to basically get away. Because once they crack the vault, there's no money in it in the vault. It's empty. Yeah. So the reason that uh, the, the present that Jason had brought – and the reason that he was kind of telling his wife that we can maybe go off and do our own thing is because before he was the one that kind of intercepted and he was planning on stealing the money and taking it from his mother himself. And he had already moved the money out of the vault to, he had hid it. It on was the, outside in the yard under nativity, right? Yeah, it was yeah. under yeah. some hay bales. <laughs> he had hid it and his plan was to go to the Christmas party Leave with the money, and then his mother would sometime tomorrow find a present with some, I think, whiskey in it and a yeah. note pretty much saying, fuck you, <laughs> I took your money, I'm gone. Right, you know, I'm, right. I'm going to live my life, and I stole $300 million from you that you can't report because you stole it from the U.S. government as well. So I win kind of thing. And then it's pretty much uh, we kind of lead up to our kind of last big fight between some of the family members and uh, John Linguizamo and uh, Santa. You want to take us through what happens there? So they kind of wind up. It's like a little cabin in the woods, like a little house in the woods. They yeah, wind like up a little out there. abandoned, like yeah. little building or cabin in the woods. Yeah. And uh, I think John Leguizamo, he finally gets his hand on. Uh, Harbor had used his scroll throughout the film. He would pull mm-hmm. it open and it would tell him somebody was naughty, somebody was nice. Right. And, you know, he saw his name on there and all the shit he had done all through the years. And, you know, he was like. Well, you know what? If you are Santa and you are the real deal, I want to end this shit forever. Right. Christmas dies tonight. Something like that. <laughs> what is this, Halloween Kills? Yeah. <laughs> Christmas dies tonight. And so they have their, their big tussle, and, uh, you know, Santa takes some pretty pretty big injuries right here. He's, mm-hmm. he's near death, if not dying, right there at the end. Yeah, he manages to uh, he manages to dispatch John Leguizamo, and I didn't really see it coming, but I guess I should have thought about it. There's a part where they end up near a chimney, and it's kind of set up through oh, the yeah. through the film that you know Santa obviously travels into the to the home and can travel through chimneys with his Santa Laying nose his magic. finger aside his nose. Exactly. So he dispatches John Leguizamo Scrooge by traveling with him. You know, taking him and traveling him through the chimney and basically tearing him into yeah. in half into pieces. Santa he, makes the trip. John yeah. Leguizamo's body exactly. does not. Exactly. <laughs> He's just basically a stump of a torso <laughs> by the end of it. Uh, I think Beverly D'Angelo ends up killing the commander. I think doesn't she end up shooting I him think in she the head? Shoots him, yeah. And then we pretty much get our uh, Santa's dying. Santa's going to die moment, but through the power of belief. Belief, he's back. The family finally believing in the Chris, the spirit of Christmas. Santa is resurrected once more, and we kind of get our, our happy ending here, Todd. The sleigh and the reindeer show back up, and all is well. Yeah, there was a gag before about him stepping in reindeer shit, <laughs> which, was, which was funny. Uh, just some notes here that I was making as I went through uh, the film. Uh, the little girl references Home Alone and calls her dad a filthy animal at one point. I didn't catch it. That's yeah, cool. That was early on, yeah. Um, 
<laughs> Cheap people apparently leave vanilla wafers for Santa instead of real cookies. <laughs> <laughs> again, this was a very typical I want my family to be a family again storyline. Um, <laughs> when Scrooge and his gang find the ice spiked body, I wanted him to rub his eyes and just say, oh, looks like we're doing a Christmas die hard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the game room fight that we mentioned is great. Uh, the bad guys put Jason's, uh, finger in a nutcracker, uh, and like crack his finger before threatening to also do the same to his balls. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> uh, you were mentioning before a little bit of Rambo. Santa stitches himself up like Rambo at one point. He takes a, like a knife swipe or injury of some sort yeah. and uses a needle and thread to kind of sew himself, sew himself up, up uh, a la Rambo first blood where he yeah. sews up his arm. Um... <laughs> the candy cane shank, the ice skate gloves he uses at one point, and the uh, the stocking stuffer grenade, all really cool gags mm-hmm. and good kills. Um, we mentioned this becomes violent home alone. And uh, let's see, what's my last one here? Um, pretty much, at, 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 really, what I can say is that if you, if you can buy into the premise here and you can get past some of the the little bit of schlock that's here. Uh, there's there's a lot of fun to kind of be had with there's this There's fun film. to be had with this movie, yeah. Exactly. Uh, you, you want some Santa bits, Todd? Santa bits. Let's I, got, do it. I got you some Santa bits here. So the logo, uh, the logo on the catering company van is called Farkas and Deal after the bullies in a Christmas story. Nice. Uh, when checking on Trudy Lightstone, Santa finds her on the nice list. Her list includes kept room clean, listens to parents, kind to animals, sweet to everyone, and invited weird kid to party. <laughs> Good for you, Trudy. Uh, Morgan Steele, we mentioned him before, is based on Mark Wahlberg. Like Wahlberg, Steele stars in several films about the military, and he says he could have stopped the hijackers on 9-11 had he been aboard the plane, a claim Wahlberg made and apologized for in 2012. Damn, okay. (laughs) Scrooge asks Santa Claus, all right, who the hell are you really, huh? Some security guard who's watched too many action flicks, which echoes Hans Gruber's question to John McClane in Die Hard. You know my name, but who are you? Just another American who saw too many movies as a child. Ah, Amazon delivers the boxes instead of Santa. Note that the smiles are all upside down to mimic a sad face. I I noticed that. I caught that. (laughs) Note the window in the attic Trudy looks out of. It's the same one Caesar looks out of in James Franco's house in Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Whoa. (laughs) And my last Santa bit for you here, Todd. After Santa Claus, David Harbour takes out some of the insurgents. Uh, John Leguizamo asks whether the protagonist could be a small-town cop with five kids, a uh, reference to Harbour's character Chief Hopper in Stranger Things. (laughs) Nice. Uh, Anything you want to go into before we get into our review here, Todd? I think I'm good, boss man. Uh, So we rank films on a 1 to 10 scale, starting from 1. The ranks are torture, 2 awful, 3 sad, 4 subpar, 5 mediocre, 6 decent, 7 good, Eight great, nine amazing, and ten masterpiece. Todd, give us your final thoughts and review score for Violent Night. I've been aware of this movie since its release. I just never took the time to watch it. And now after seeing it, I'm glad I did. It's kind of crazy to have a movie with this level of violence that also pulls off some heart and Christmas cheer. Uh, There's no debating whether this action flick is a Christmas movie, though, because Santa's front and center, drinking, puking, and bashing skulls. (laughs) I give Violet Knight seven skulls of splitting, which on our our scale is good. Nice. Uh, Any chance you'd add this film to your yearly holiday uh, watch list, Todd? I could honestly see it working its way on there. I, I had that much of a kind of a kick out of watching it. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. It would be near the bottom, I'll be honest, but yeah. I could see it it's going no, into rotation. <laughs> it would never replace a Home Alone or a Christmas Vacation or something like right. that. But I could see it being on a, on a yearly watch list for sure. Uh, it, Todd, if you were uh, casting a, for a, a Easter thriller film, maybe it was called An Excellent Day to Die. <laughs> yeah. Who would you cast as the Easter Bunny? Jason Statham. 
<laughs> He's a beekeeper now, though. No. Uh, for me, uh, when it comes to Violet Night, uh, I'm, I'm in complete agreement with you. Like I said, I got a lot more enjoyment out of this than I thought. It was something when I saw it when it was first released, it looked interesting. Like I said, if you can buy into the premise and get past a little bit of the schlock, and like I said, some of the action is a little too much, uh, waiting for the next guy before I hit him and running at me with, you know, without shooting me kind of thing with your yeah. gun drone. If you get past some of that stuff, like there, there's some fun to be had here. I give Violent Night a 6 out of 10, which ranks it as decent. Todd, tell everyone how they can find us and stay up to date with us on social media. We're at Tau Capes on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Tau Capes Podcast on Facebook. You can also email us at TauCapesPod at gmail.com. Also, if you're so obliged, leaving us a five-star review on your podcast app of choice really helps the show. Popcorn Mumbles will return next week. We want to thank you so much for listening. Until next time, bye, guys. Later, guys.